guys? I'm John Setzler. Welcome back to the Kamado Joe cooking channel. Today I'm going to fire up the Kamado Joe Classic 3 with the slow roller and we're going to cook a prime grade beef brisket and as a bonus I'm going to show you what you can do with all that leftover fat that you trim from that brisket. We're going to convert that into beef tallow so let's get started. We're going to get started today by lighting a fire in the center of the firebox in my Kamado Joe Classic and I'm going to put a couple of pieces of cherry wood in here today for some smoke. I've just got about three chunks there and then I'm going to put the pieces of the slow roller in place. Then next we'll set the divide and conquer rack in on top of the slow roller and I'm going to set both halves of the grill grate in the lower position or in the center position here with the slow roller in and then I'm just going to close the lid and we're going to engage the I command. I'm going to close the slider on the top vent down to about halfway between the first and the second mark and I'm going to engage the I command to run at about 250 degrees for this cook. While our grill's coming up to temperature, I'm going to start prepping this brisket. I've got a 14 and a half pound prime grade brisket that I picked up from Sam's Club. So I'm going to do this part off camera. I'm going to take this out of the cryovac and I'm going to trim all the fat. If you'd like to see a video on how that process takes place, if you will search YouTube for my, Bri for my Kamado Joe Brisket 101 video, you'll find all the details on that. Okay, I've got my brisket trimmed about how I like it, and I trimmed off two and a half pounds of fat from this particular brisket. I didn't trim this one quite as aggressively as I normally would. I normally would have got another pound of fat uh, from this brisket or so by going in here and getting more out of that fat vein between the point and the flat, but for this brisket, I'm okay with this. What I like to do is convert this fat into beef tallow and normally what I do is I don't do this until I've gotten the fat from three or four briskets. When I do this I toss this in a vacuum seal bag and just toss it in the freezer until I get ready to go but while we've got our brisket cooking I'm gonna go ahead and make beef tallow out of this to show you how to do it so let's go ahead and finish prepping this brisket and get it on the grill I need to put some rub on it. I left about a quarter of an inch of fat cap on the back side of this brisket and we're going to start putting our rub on there. Today I'm going to be using the Atlanta Grill Company's Man Cave Mills Beef Mojo on this brisket and I'm just going to put a really liberal coat of this on both sides and I'm going to rub it in. And then I'll flip it over and get a nice heavy coat of this on the top side you want to put enough rub on there where you can't see the meat you just want to put a good coat of whatever your favorite rub is and now that I have a good coat on there I'm just gonna let this brisket sit for about 10 minutes maybe 15 while our grill finishes coming up to temperature okay our grills up to temperature our briskets ready I've set my rib rack on here because this is a classic and I've got a rather large cut of meat so we're gonna set this brisket right on here I'm just gonna drape this across the rib rack where it'll fit on here nicely and I'm gonna put my ambient meat probe right in the center of the flat here I'm sorry my yeah but my not my ambient meat probe but my meat probe so we can monitor the temperature of this brisket throughout the cook. I'm just going to close this up and like I said we're going to run at 250. I don't know how long it's going to take but I will tell you how long it's gone when we get finished with this cook. So we'll just close that guy up and let it roll and in the meantime we're going to make beef tallow. To get started on our beef tallow, I've taken all that fat that we trimmed off and I've put it in a stock pot and what we're going to do here is turn the burner on and I'm just going to cover that fat with water. And what we're going to do is bring that up to a slow simmer and just let it go. And what's going to happen is the water is going to heat up, 
this fat's going to render and the water's going to boil off where we've got nothing left but fat. And this takes quite a few hours to do, so I'm just going to let this go. And when all the water's boiled off and all the fat that's going to render has rendered, we'll come back and have a look and I'll also give you a time estimate on how long this takes. This takes quite a while. This has started simmering and it's been simmering for a little bit here and I'm going to back the heat down a little bit because we just want this at a very slow simmer and like I said this is going to take hours and we're going to eventually be evaporating all the water out of that. Uh, all of this fat will not render but most of it will and when we get down near the end of this project on this part we'll be back to have a look. We've been rendering this fat here for about six hours or so now and we're getting down near the end and once I'm down this low, this fat that's still in here is not going to render. It's been in here long enough that it would have rendered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my screen and I'm going to ladle that fat out. And after I have that ladled out, what we've got here basically is pure fat. You can see that it's still bubbling, which means that we still have some water in there. So I'm going to continue to let that simmer just like that until it stops bubbling. Okay, after that finished bubbling and cleaned out, I strained that fat through some cheesecloth into a mason jar and that takes a while to cool but once it cools it firms up and becomes white and solid like what you see in this jar from this last batch I did. Didn't get a whole lot from this batch because like I said I normally like to collect the fat from uh, three or four briskets. I like to have at least 10 pounds of fat to start with and when I have 10 pounds of fat to start with I usually get at least two of these quart mason jars full. So this is how this works. It's very easy to make this. If you don't want to waste that fat this is definitely an option you can do with it. What this is good for is anytime you want to saute something and add that kind of beef flavor to it, you can do it with this. You just put a little bit of this in the pan like you would butter or ghee or Crisco. You can deep fry in this. McDonald's used to make their french fries in beef tallow. I don't know if they still do or not, but that's what it's good for. The beef tallow has a smoke point of about 400 degrees. It's not quite as good as ghee on that front because ghee goes to 450, but this is perfect for a lot of things. You can do a lot of great things with beef tallow, so that's how this is made. We've been going about seven hours here now, and my bark is set up pretty good on this brisket. It's formed fairly well, and the internal temperature on that meat's almost up to 170. So what I'm going to do at the moment, you can see how it's shrunk up some, so I don't need the rib rack anymore. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to wrap it in foil and remove the rib rack, and we're going to put it back on the grill and finish it wrapped in foil. Okay, I've got this brisket wrapped, and we're going to set it right back here, and we're going to finish it up. I'm going to put the meat probe back in here just so I can kind of monitor where we are on the temperature and we'll be back when this is done. Okay, we've been going just about nine hours and I believe our brisket is just about ready. I'm gonna pull that temperature probe out of there and I'm gonna bring this foil back. Man, it looks and it smells amazing. I'm gonna use a bamboo skewer Uh, this guy's not quite ready yet. We're going to wrap it back up, and I'm probably going to give it another half an hour. And we'll come back, check it again. Alrighty, I went for another hour here, and I think we're ready now. So, this thing's probing super tender now, so I'm going to wrap this back up and an extra layer of foil. I'm gonna to toss it in my Yeti cooler and we're gonna let it rest for a couple hours. Okay folks, I've rested this brisket for about two hours and I want you to have a look at this. Look at that. That's amazing. Look at that smoke ring we got. That slow roller is doing a beautiful job 
with the smoke rings. Let me take a, a slice off of here. Have a look at that. That thing just bends right over. That's beautiful. And it just pulls right apart. That's a perfect brisket cook. It's absolutely amazing. I don't think I could have asked for anything better than that. I continue to be impressed with the slow roller every time I use it. That definitely made a beautiful smoke ring on this brisket. And it's just that simple. You saw how we did it. When I got down near the end of this cook, I didn't spend any more time checking the temperature. When I got up to about 197 or 198 degrees internal temperature, I just pulled my thermometer out. And if you notice, when I tested uh, for doneness, I was just using a bamboo skewer. I'm not using the thermometer because the temperature doesn't really matter. You're looking for that same level of tenderness and you'll know it when you get there and it won't happen at the same temperature every time. So enjoy the brisket and give this technique a try. Let me know what you think. I want to see you try out the uh, beef tallow method as well and just have fun with it. Until next time, this is John Setzler with the Kamado Joe Cooking Channel.